hey guys and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video welcome to night number three of my second annual 13 nights of fright as a reminder all the movies that i am uh, reviewing this year um, are all first time watches so with that said tonight we're going to be talking about 2014's what we do in the shadows also, this is the third and last vampire review uh, for this year. I do love a vampire movie. So what we do in the shadows is a New Zealand mockumentary. It is written and directed by Jermaine Clement and Taika Waititi, who I absolutely love. Now, they actually both star in the film as well. So a documentary crew is following four vampire roommates. We all go Ladislava, we're going to call him Vlad, Deacon, and Peter. So while they're filming the documentary, they did grant the crew members some protection by giving them some crucifixes. Each night the three vampires go out and they're prowling the streets of uh, Wellington trying to find somebody to kill slash eat. Technically it's a murder but then it technically it's also their dinner. Because they cannot enter buildings without invitations and they must stay in their flat obviously during the daytime because you know like the killer son. They unfortunately have not been able to adapt to the 21st century. Let me go ahead and let you know a little bit about these vampires. First up would be the Agu, who is 379 years old, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna botch his name as I am gonna botch everybody's name, but that's nothing new here, you guys. If you're new, that's nothing new here. Now he is pretty much like the house mother, I guess you can see in a way. After everybody on having to do their chores, there's a little flat meeting at the beginning about Deacon not washing the dishes in the last five years and you must wash the dishes. He is from the 17th century and he originally traveled to New Zealand in the 1910s in search for his love, Catherine. As per usual, there is a bit of a love story, not really a love story, but like a behind the scene love story. Just one of the many tropes that um, are involved in vampire movies, you know, the, the forbidden love, the lost love. Some people freak out a bit about the age difference. They think, what's this 96 year old lady doing with a guy four times her age? They can call me Cradle Snatcher, who cares? And then we have Vladi Slava, Vlad for short. Um, he is 862 years old. He was known as as of Vladislava the poker. Now he's haunted by memories from his nemesis the beast. Now he is from the 12th century. He was a hypnotist and a like shapeshifter back in his like prime years. But because of his rivalry uh, with the beast, just certain things that did happen with the beast, um, his powers are now not so much going on. Then we have Deacon, who is the baby of the group. He is one little young vampire coming in at only 183 years old. He's pretty much like the bad boy of the group. That's, you know, he's the one that doesn't want to do the dishes, like I said earlier. Now, he was turned into a vampire by Peter, and there's a funny little story about that, too. Now, Peter is the oldest one here. He is coming in at 8,000 years old, and he is definitely, he is most definitely, actually, either Nosferatu's brother or cousin. They're definitely relatives, you guys. I mean... I'll put a picture up here. Not only did he turn uh, Peter into a vampire, not Peter, he is Peter <laughs> Deacon into a vampire, but once we are, you know, in today's time period, uh, he ends up turning this loser Nick into a vampire as well. Pretty much causes a little bit of conflict within the group. Nobody really liked Nick. The neighbors can see you flying around. You want to draw attention to this house, hmm? I've got a whole documentary crew following you around. But we do love his best friend, his BFFF, his human BFFF, Stu, which he plays an IT person in the film, and surprisingly enough, which I did not know until I was kind of looking into things on the, about the movie, he in real life is an IT person. Like, <laughs> he is not an actor, you guys. He's actually one of Taika Waititi's, like, friends. They initially told him that he was just gonna have, like, this small, kind of, like, I guess, like, insignificant part in the movie just so he can act more, like, natural. Now, according to Clement and Waititi, some of their favorite vampire movies include The Lost Boys, Interview with the Vampire, and uh, Bram Stoker's uh, Dracula. Now, all those films are referenced within this particular film, as is Blade, um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Twilight. We're getting 
part documentary part reality show i mean you guys it's a funny ass movie like i cannot believe it has taken me this long to watch this movie if you're going to eat a sandwich you would just enjoy it more if you knew no one had it i don't even remember a trailer back in 2014 about this movie i'm just like Kalimina and Waititi got the reality show format just right with the direct interview, the um, confessional voiceovers, the like drastic zoom in um, reactions. This movie is just absolutely perfect for me. It's my perfect like Halloween vibe. Like I said before, like many times, I love comedy movies. It's a dark comedy, it's a satire mockumentary reality show you will not eat the camera right. guy maybe I'm one camera guy. guy a parody that matches up like all like the vamp well not maybe like all of them but like a lot of like the vampire books and like tv shows movies into like this wonderful movie that if it's something that you seem like you would be into i totally recommend before i give you my score if you haven't yet don't forget to give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. Especially so you don't miss the remaining of this series, you guys. Um, tomorrow night, we will be talking about 1932's The Mummy. Like I said many times throughout this, this review, this movie is just absolutely wonderful. I cannot believe it's taking me this long to watch it. I'm so glad I finally caught it. It's literally one of my top tier vampire movies now. I know a lot of people don't like dark humor. Um, yes, there's blood because we are dealing with vampires. It gets pretty like gory out there. This definitely could have been a major disaster as a parody could very well be thankfully it was again done very well it's like um i don't know i feel like it's like a like a passion project like they they know the topic of vampires and they went for it and made something good now this has actually even branched out to a tv series on fx it has a three seasons um it did come out in 2019 now with that said i'm going to give what we do in the shadows a large popcorn of course i'm pretty sure you guys saw that coming if you've seen this movie, let me know down below. What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Was it just not for you? If you've never seen this movie or heard of it, is it maybe something now that you're looking forward to watching? This has definitely made it into my yearly like Halloween watches. I did buy it digitally. I was going to rent it because it's unfortunately not available to stream. Or if it is, I didn't see it. But I'm like, I don't know. Something deep down tells me I'm going to really enjoy this movie and let's hope you know like it doesn't do me wrong where i'm gonna be like i should have just rented that movie but no it's great i own it now so i can watch it whenever i want i'm so excited you guys all right guys that is it for me tonight i'll see you guys tomorrow bye <laughs>